All right, so welcome back again. Uh, now we're going to try to use your MPLAB X install and make a simple little program. Uh, so go ahead and fire up uh, MPLAB. Uh, should probably look uh, like this. It's kind of organized where it's got a start page here. To be honest, I don't find the start page that useful. Uh, I typically close it. Um, looks like there's some weird um, things going on here. I also close um, everything but the projects tab over here. It's the only one I like. Um, just to kind of talk about MPLAB X, there were two versions. There was one called MPLAB version 8, and then there's this new one called MPLAB X. Um, MPLAB X is based on a program called NetBeans, um, so it's got a lot of ways you can edit it so that it looks and feels just like you want. Um, so I just kind of um, got rid of the start page and opened the projects tab here. So the way it's organized is uh, <clears throat> everything is into a project. So we're going to say uh, file new project. So a file by itself is meaningless, right? So you want to go file um, new project. And the type of project we're going to create uh, every time is a standalone project uh, for a microchip embedded. Um, so that's what we're going to always do. Uh, so you can say next. Uh, this I find annoying. Uh, you have to type in every single time what device you want. We're going to use the same device every time. Um, so you can, you can get there a number of ways. Um, Personally, I find it easiest. Um, so actually, you could, you could, if you want, go to advanced uh, microcontrollers. You could find it. Uh, but I find it easiest just to type in PIC 18F4520. Uh, um, and then, so it should pop it up uh, in the list. You can select from the list 18F4520. That's our microcontroller in this class. Uh, the next question is, all these questions, I know they look intimidating. Um, what hardware tool are you going to use? Um, in general, in this class, we're going to use the PIT Kit 3. Um, you should have gotten a little PIT Kit 3 uh, that we use in the next video lecture. Uh, but this time, we're just going to use the simulator. The simulator says, stay on my computer. Don't actually download to anywhere. Um, it's just kind of for testing. So simulator is going to be great. Um, next thing it'll ask you is which compiler you want to use. Um, by default, um, it came pre-installed with two assembly language compilers. You do not want to write an assembly language. It looks like gibberish, very, very, very low level. Um, there's other compilers. Um, you should have installed just one, uh, a C18 compiler. Select it from the list, right? So that's the only compiler you have installed. Um, the next thing you've got to decide is how do you want to organize your projects. Two good options. One good option is just to use the default folder, right? I mean, that totally works. That's no big deal at all. Um, if you would like to be, you know, nerdy like me, um, I sometimes like to put everything into, um, you know, kind of like my own area. So I make a, um, a folder for the course, um, and then inside here I'll make one called, like, ME430 Projects. Um, and then I'll put everything into this ME430 projects area. Up to you, right? This first project we're just going to call Hello World. So you can see what it's going to do is it's going to create a folder for you um, inside that folder location and it's going to call it Hello World.x. It calls folders.x. It's kind of crazy. Um, and we should be able to hit finish. What that'll do is that'll create a new project for you. Um, again, it opens up some more tabs, which I don't find that useful. I'm just going to close those. Um, there's also things like task. Yeah, we'll just close it for now. So what we've got here is we've got our project. Um, our project consists of header files, of which there are none, and source files, of which there are none, um, and then a bunch of other things that we don't care about. Let's go ahead and create a new uh, source file. So source files are your .c files. Uh, that's where your actual like, implementation is. Um, header files are .h files. Um, that's where you say, like, what are the functions going to be? We're going to use um, uh, source files, .c files, uh, quite a bit in this class. So I said empty file, uh, so I have to actually add the .c on here. Uh, because it could have been any type of file. Um, so I created a file called hello world.c. All right, easy enough. You could call it a different name, but hello world.c is, is going to be great. 
And then for the purposes of this video lecture, uh, you can just kind of type what I'm typing, right? Um, you can see that NetBeans helps you. Um, so if you want to uh, type it, you can type it. Or if you want to kind of autocomplete um, whatever NetBeans is ready to autocomplete for you, uh, you can do that. The structure of all the programs uh, that we're going to do um, are like this. They're going to have a area for uh, setup uh, where things happen once and an area um, that's in a while one loop. Uh, one is true, so it means while true, which means it runs forever. So we're going to have two areas. We're going to have a setup area and a loop area. These are going to be within a function called main. I should figure out how to change the font size on this. Um, maybe some other time. Um, hopefully you'll uh, be able to, to read it this time, then I'll fix it for next time. Uh, so what I want to type um, is I want to type um, a command um, called printf. Uh, printf is a function. Uh, we're calling this function. We did not write this function, so it better be in some other library. Um, it turns out that's why we did this pound include at the top. It's in a library called standard.io, which is abbreviated STDIO, um, and it's hello world. So this is the hello world area, hello world function. Um, it's going to print it exactly one time, uh, and then it'll be done. The button that you're going to use uh, a lot is the uh, debug project button. Um, so you um, simply click this one button, um, and what it'll do is it will uh, compile your code. Um, so look for syntax errors. If there are no errors, um, it will go ahead and um, program a target device. Since we're using the simulator here, that step is trivial and then it'll start running it. So it does three things kind of all really fast. Um, and what it should have done here is it should have uh, opened up some windows at the bottom. One of them is called the UR1 output. Um, later in the class we'll say why it's called that. Um, and it should say hello world. Um, mine had a little glitch and it didn't print the H. It says hello world, uh, which is fine. Um, the way the debugger works is you can stop the debugger um, that'll like end it, um, and if you wanted to start it again, uh, you could click on this button again and you could run it a second time. Um, for some reason my tab moved with UART1. Um, ah, this time it worked. It says hello world instead of hello world. The debugger, you can see while it's running, you could pause it if you wanted. Um, it's just, it's stuck in this infinite while loop, right, so it's not doing much. Um, so if you pause it or play it, um, it'll, it'll go back in there. You could reset it to the beginning. Um, so if I do this and then hit play, it will actually print out Hello World a third time. So if I hit play, um, it did Hello World again. Um, and so it's a debugger that you can use in a lot of ways. Uh, just to kind of add something else uh, to this, let's go ahead and set up a variable um, x. Uh, let's make x, I don't know, x is equal to 3 plus 4. Uh, and then if we wanted to print out um, x, uh, we could do it like this. Uh, what I'm doing here is what's called a formatted print statement. Um, you can just copy the, the what I'm typing, but it's printf, um, and then it's got like a string, uh, so it says x equals uh, percent %d. Percent %d is called a token, which is going to get replaced by something later. And then this backslash n, should have mentioned this before, it's just a new line character. It's the reason this went to the next line. Um, instead of getting printed over and over and over again. Um, so that's the change that I wanted to make. So now it should say hello world and then x equals 7. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear off. Um, so I right clicked and then I found clear. I know it's off my screen um, and it cleared it off. And now if I run it, it'll say in this UART1 output, um, hello world x is equal to 7. There's also the loop area just to mention it. Um, what the loop area can be used for is for doing things continuously. Uh, so let's say I uh, used a command that you'll learn about later, which is x plus uh, plus. This is shorthand for saying x is equal to x plus one. Um, it's just kind of a little uh, syntax in C. By the way, this is the joke. If you've ever heard of C plus plus, it's because of this operator, right? It's this operator is like the next version of something. Um, so that's that's a little trick there. Uh, another thing you'll notice is 
that I copy pasted this line and I just pasted it right in here. The tabbing was wrong. Uh, that's okay. I'll hit Alt Shift F. Um, and that's an auto formatter. Alt -sh Shift F. That's your friend. Um, so now if I run it, um, hopefully you can guess what's going to happen. It's going to print it once as 7. Um, and then um, as it runs, it's just going to print more and more and more. Um, and it'll keep going for a really long time um, unless you pause it. Um, and so that's kind of all I wanted to show you. Um, I wanted to do Hello World uh, just so you could make a program that works. Um, I wanted to show you this kind of setup area that happens once. Um, and then this loop area which happens forever and ever and ever. Um, and I also wanted to mention that you can include header files um, and use functions you didn't write. We'll talk more about these things as we go, uh, but now you've got your Hello World program done. Next time what we're going to do is we're going to talk to a real device. See you then.